Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ever-beautiful Puerto Rico. My name is Max Thorne, the voice of UCW, and this is the Bash at the Beach pre-show panel. And joining me for this lovely day is my good friend and returning to UCW, Aiden Connors. Aiden, say hello to everybody, my man. Hello, everybody. It's been quite some time. Um, what would I say, Max? About five, six years, maybe. It's an honor it's to been be a back. while. It's an honor to be back here in UCW, especially on the pre-show panel for one of our biggest shows yet, Bash at the Beach here in, like you said, beautiful Puerto Rico. And not only is it a beautiful time for a beautiful show, but we have a stacked card for everybody here tonight. Indeed, my man. And when I say that tensions are high here in UCW right now, it's, it's not an exaggeration and it is not a joke. But you can literally cut the tension here in UCW with a knife. Just about everybody inside that locker room probably wants to kill each other, if we're being honest. <laughs> yeah, it, it honestly feels like that at this point. If it, isn't, if it isn't the main event tonight, it's the world championship match. If it isn't the world championship match, it's some of our, our matches that go on tonight. Everybody's at each other's throats because they know that this is one of our first pay-per-views back since DCW returned. And... They're scratching at the door of opportunity, and honestly, I think they're tired of scratching. I think they're ready to kick the goddamn door down. 100%. And uh, maybe you could, some people could channel their inner Sandman, crap a couple beer cans over their heads, but the million-dollar question before we uh, get into these matches, what are you drinking tonight? Cherry vodka and Coke, my go-to, my friend. Let's go. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, you all know me. I am a bushlight guy. I got plenty of bushlight at my, at my commentary desk for later tonight. Plenty in the back just in case. But uh, without further ado, man, let's get into it for the opening contest. The Global Championship as Wayne defends his title against Trey Mercer. This is going to be quite an interesting opening contest, man. I got to agree with you. Um, ever since Wayne has won the championship, the one question that has been running through my mind is, who can take it off of him? Because he's that kind of champion where you got to sit there and wonder, who can break down Wayne Watson, not only in the mind games, but also in ring, in terms of striking, technicality, submission. you got to wonder who can break him down. If he... Mm -hmm. As I say, in the last time that we saw Trey here in UCW, he was raising some absolute hell. And the point being there also... Wayne was honestly kind of terrified of Trey the last time he was here. And now that Wayne has the title, it really begs the question, does Wayne have what it takes to defeat Trey this time? Or does Trey still have the mental edge over his opponent? There's so many factors going into this, man. There, There is a lot of factors going into this, with Trey definitely having the mind games right now. Keeping that level oh, yeah. head against Wayne. Um two veterans of their craft going into this match. But again, with, with Wayne in his history in the MMA, his history in mm -hmm. UCW, you gotta wonder what will he do to pull out of the bag to get a level head over the coach. Because you can play mind games all you want, but what matters is when that bell rings and you're in the middle of that ring. Yeah, 100%. And if we're looking at some statistics here, Wayne is the master of the guillotine choke. That's how he won the title. He made Jackie Blank pass out on the ladder at Quest for Gold, and then he submitted him again with a rear naked choke on Inferno, and then that was really where Trey made his debut and continued once again to play the mental warfare with Wayne. For every chance that Trey Mercer has had, because if I might also add this in, he also beat a former opponent of Wayne's in Jackie Blank in very convincing fashion on the second episode of Inferno. So again... There's this dynamic here between these two, between the coach and, of course, the brawler and Wayne, in the sense that Trey, anything that Wayne can do, Trey has been able to do better, if not more dangerously. That is a good point, but we also got to tie in the factor that the last time that he competed into, for a championship here in UCW, it was the XPW championship against R-Dub, and that match ended oh, in Oh, I remember that. He was not mm -hmm. able to beat R-Dub. So you got to wonder, will he go two for two for not being able to beat him in time? Or will he even be able to beat him? Because again, mind games is all a different topic in comparison to what happens in the ring. So I got to ask, who do you think is going to win this match? I'm probably going to have to go with Trey Mercer, but at the same time, it would not surprise me if Wayne does win. Wayne has always been a favorite of mine, you know, 
over the course of the years, you know, his days in the Rebel Society and now during his days as a lone wolf. But at the same time, also, the element of surprise has really been a center point around the Global Championship. That was how Wayne won the title at Quest for Gold, because he was he was the ace in the whole, if that makes sense. And, uh, and now, in this case, I think Trey Mercer is the ace, because not only has he been able to win the Mental Warfare, he has the crowd at his back, an entire swarm of fans here in Puerto Rico to boot, so... In that sense, my pick is Trey Mercer. I completely understand that, but uh, again, I, I know I'm kind of kicking the dead horse with this point, and maybe it's because <laughs> I've just been used to seeing Wayne here in UCW, and I've, I've been taking my time to study the, the newer people that have uh, appeared on the scene in professional wrestling. Yeah, Wayne, that's all good, man. That's totally good. <clears throat> Wayne and Trey may both be veterans of their craft, yes. But you've got to take into account of Wayne's history with the MMA. He knows how to systematically break down somebody's body until it is useless. And Trey, mm-hmm. with that, that lariat of his, all it takes is one good attack to those arms, and that's out the window. And even his muscle buster, that requires a lot of arm strength just as, enough, uh, as it does back strength. And then you can also say just one good attack to the back, and it's all done. Wayne can easily take out Trey Mercer's whole, whole play field of attack. So, honestly, I, I think Wayne's retaining tonight. It's honestly a pretty good take. And again, we're going to get very technical for you guys here tonight. Again, the card is stacked. Everybody has all sorts of aces in the hole. It's going to be a, an amazing, amazing card. So then, following that up, a battle of the technicalities? Now, we're just going into a straight-up fight. Because Colby Jordan is going to take on the debuting heraldry here in UCW. And... Holy shit. Heraldry in UCW facing Colby Jordan. That is quite... Take it away, Aiden, because this is <laughs> this is insane. That is quite insane to think about. Um, even my days whenever I was commentating every now and then with the old commentators, I never would have mm-hmm. thought that, um, that we would see somebody at the level of Heraldry in this company. But the way that he's been approaching this is much different than the heraldry that I knew. Again, I, I took some time off from professional mm-hmm. wrestling for fi- uh, family and friends, so I, I just abstracted professional wrestling from my mind so I didn't have any temptations to get back here until now. Whenever mm-hmm. I last saw heraldry, he had the slick back, ginger hair, the beard, the trunk. Like, ah. he, he, he looked like the kind of guy that would lift somebody up in a bar and throw them across the room, and now he looks like the Grim <laughs> Reaper himself. He literally is the freaking Grim Reaper, and to go on to that point of him being the Grim Reaper, Heraldry has been mentally screwing with Colby Jordan. Man, what's up with all the mental warfare going on in this pay-per-view? But to kind of piggyback off of that point, Colby Jordan has accused Heraldry, and it might honestly be Heraldry because who else has been knocking the lights out in the arena? He cost Colby Jordan a shot at competing for the ECW YouTube Championship, which is going to be, you know, won later tonight, and... Literally that same night after Colby lost to Colin, lost, quote-unquote, he blamed Heraldry, challenged him for this match, and it was made official. So it's going to be the retired Godslayer versus the Grim Reaper here tonight. And like you said, man, Heraldry has changed a great deal in the years since we last saw him here in ECW. So that really begs the question, who is going to be the more dangerous man in that match? It's kind of hard for me to say, unbiasedly and logically, because just as much as Heraldry has changed, Colby Jordan has changed. We've seen oh, him go 100%. through multiple different meta- uh, metamorphoses of his character, of his persona, of his mindset. He's gone from mm-hmm. the, the leader of Satanic Strong style to the God of Thunder to now just a straight God Slayer. But what's a God to somebody who quite literally looks like he controls their fate. So Yeah, right? I, I know that, and I, I can hear them screaming in my, my headphones right now, pick one, pick <laughs> one, but yeah. I, honestly, it's hard for me to call. Because just as much I, as Heraldry's changed, Colby has changed. So if, if you want me to give an unbiased opinion, I think these two are going to beat the hell out of each other until a time limit draw. That wouldn't surprise me, and... To your earlier point, we've seen Colby change so much. He is a multiple-time world champion here in ECW, and he's I feel like he's developed a mindset of like, all right, you know what? 
No pyro, no nothing. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to start fighting. Mm -hmm. So, to that end, Colby Jordan does have a really good shot at beating Heraldry, but let's be honest here also, this is a match that the community has wanted to see for a long time under different circumstances as well, but, you know, it was like a case of where it's, you know, light versus dark, good versus evil. That, I don't really think that's the case here tonight. It's just two dudes who just want to beat the living hell out of each other and just to see who truly is the better man. Is it the retired God Slayer in Colby Jordan? Or is it the living embodiment of death itself, the Grim Reaper of this business in Heraldry? I'm actually going to agree with you. I think these two guys are going to go to a time limit draw because I honestly think Puerto Rico might not be enough to contain what these two men are going to do to each other. Yeah, honestly, I think you'll need to find hell itself just to contain these two. It, it, it sounds <laughs> overdramatic, but God damn it, is it the truth? Yep, and speaking of hell itself, that's probably what these next two men are going to be doing to each other. Peligro going up against the king of crime, Bill Moriarty. And my man, when I tell you that people have been screwed over on a consistent basis, <laughs> I mean... You may as well keep a running list of the amount of time that these two have screwed each other over in respective matches. And at the same time, what started out as a pissing contest between the King of Crime and the Luchador, now it's turned into an all-out war. It really has. Um, the last time that we saw these two involved with one another, Peligro was costing Bill Moriarty. Bill Moriarty was costing Peligro. But we got to talk about where this started, this exact place mm -hmm. here in Puerto Rico. Whenever, oh, yep. whenever Bill's still associated with Slade Draven of the Chess Club, they cost Peligro the UCW World Championship with Brian the Brain. And Undivided Evil, too, I might add. I apologize for the interruption, but no, you're, you're let's also take gone. that into the mix. Let's put that into the mix as well. Bill is trying to branch out on his own, but in this is going to sound like I'm biased, but I'm just, we're, we're both speaking the truth here. Bill is still in some ways stuck in the shadow of undivided evil, and in hindsight, he's still living in the past because, like you said, here in Puerto Rico, Bill did cost Peligro a shot and a victory at the UCW World Championship. So that really makes you wonder, who's really in advantage here, you know? Honestly, I don't think there is any mindset of advantage, no advantage, whenever it comes to this match. It's just a matter of, that mental edge that we've been talking about on and off throughout the, the pre-show panel so far, it's a matter of, mm -hmm. has Bill systematically broken down Peligro mentally to a point where he would make mistakes? A lot of people would think that Peligro is going into this match with an old mindset of his. If you remember the Johnny Hazard persona before he donned the mask, people would yes, think sir. that he's, people would think he's maybe tapping into that mindset a little bit, but if you ask me, I think Bill Moriarty has gotten the mental edge and is cutting deep into Peligro to a point where it's, he thinks he's going in with that mindset, that edge of the, the old persona Johnny Hazard. But I think mm -hmm. he's going into this, honestly, going to make mistakes. I think he's going to go into tonight yeah. and make mistakes because of that anger. Because you can only be screwed out of so many championships, so many opportunities, so many wins. To, <laughs> you, can only, you can only have that happen so many times before it's set, you know? Mm -hmm. And combine that with the fact that Bill made a very bold claim during a uh, pre-show uh, promo for Inferno a couple weeks ago where um, he wants to change the landscape of UCW and he wants to get a people like Peligro who he has deemed, quote, a cockroach of UCW. And honestly, like you said, that aggressive mindset can definitely benefit a good man, or a bad man in this case, and, um, you know, in many instances as well, the, like this, I don't want to say it's been a pissing contest, I mean, you pretty much hit the nail right on the head, but, you know, at the same time, like, where you think that Peligro may be thinking too much, you know, on the side of vengeance, in some instances, though, that can help you, you might be blinded by your rage, but your rage can also help you. But it might also help, you know, Bill Moriarty in this case. Because, I mean, it has been the driving force of this entire feud. It really has. This, the idea of ideologies and anger, that's really what I have mm -hmm. pinned it down to in my time since coming back and studying over at UCW since I was gone for over half a decade. Jesus, that's... <laughs> Kid, who's around? Yep. But, 
<laughs> but ever, time, man. Time is a bitch. It really is. But ever since I've been studying over what it all transpired here in UCW with Poligro, mm-hmm. Mill, Colby and Aldry, any of the matches here tonight, that's really what it comes down to is a form of ideology where Poligro is just trying to get forward in, in the scene here in UCW and Bill Moriarty is just trying to break out of the shadow and it's just, it's collided into a war. It's like oil and water. Mm-hmm. It just it can't possibly mix. It's a powder keg that's ready to explode. That being said, Let's go in with the predictions. Me, I'm going to lean on the side of good this time. I'm going to go with my man Peligro. He honestly has so much to gain from a victory in this match. And honestly, again, I'm going to sound like a dick here, but, you know, everyone is used to it and everyone behind me can agree. I am a bit of an asshole, but that's how I am. He needs to knock Bill Moriarty down a peg because, let's be honest, Bill is egotistical. He talks and acts like a dick. And let's be honest, my man James Frost made him look like a bitch with Peligro's aid in the in one of the contendership matches for the YouTube Championship. So, Peligro, here in Puerto Rico, you're going to make him look like a bitch and go into that match with sad Miedo, my good man. I'm going to have to go with Bill Moriarty tonight. I think he <laughs> has the... Um... The mental edge and i know people will be thinking like oh my god they've only agreed on one match stop telling them to do one thing no th- this is raw authentic <laughs> opinions i do believe yeah. that bill moriarty has cut deep enough into peligro to where he has drawn that metaphorical blood and i believe that he will use that to his advantage to let peligro slip up in his anger and he will take advantage on that because yes i do agree with you bill has definitely stood in a shadow of undivided evil but He's also very coordinated in his attacks from what mm-hmm. I have seen of him. So I think he has cut in deep enough to make Peligro make mistakes. I think Peligro will slip up tonight, and Bill will get the win. Mm-hmm. There you go, my man. And moving forward, because, again, I, like I mentioned before, there are so many stories coming into this pay-per-view, and there is so much animosity. There is plenty of animosity between two of the most dangerous women in this company. Cassidy Blank, the seductress, going head to head against the queen, Celeste Moda, for the UCW Women's Championship. Is it poetic to say that this is a friendship in flames? Or is this just a battle of egos, or among other things, just two women out here to prove why they deserve to be called Women's Champion on one of UCW's grandest stages? I mean, I genuinely believe it comes down to the far latter there. A lot of people will talk mm-hmm. about the, the, the friendship that was and the rivalry that has became, but in professional wrestling, I'm, I'm turning 46 years old. I've been seeing this shit for long enough to know that friends don't really exist yeah. in professional wrestling. No, they but, don't. <laughs> but I think it all comes down to history whenever it comes to the UCW Women's Championship because we got to take into account so that, much. that either way, history will be made tonight. It's either Cassidy Blank wins and she becomes the first three-time Women's Champion or Celeste Little <laughs> wins Ew. and she joins the class of two-time Women's Champion. So no matter what, I'm, I'm happy. History yeah. is made tonight, but i got to... I got to pick, I got to make my choices, I got to break this down and see who I think wins. Because if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. the last time we held back at the beach, Celeste did face Cassidy for the Women's Championship, but we, there was a certain somebody who came in and robbed the whole scene. Yep, Fiona Blitz. And granted, while her name has fallen into obscurity over the years, both Cassidy and Celeste have made their history, they've... They've pretty much secured their legacy in this business, and they deserve their spot in the long line of women's champions. You know, of course, for all the folks at home and for those who need a little bit of a history lesson, of course, Cassie was the inaugural women's champion on July 8th, 2016, and of course, the many faces who have held that belt since. You know, Lizzie Belitsky, Cindy Brooks, you know, just to name a few, Cassidy Brooks. So many talented women and so many dangerous women, but... Of course, we circle back to this theme, history. There's so much history between Cassidy and Celeste, and a lot of animosity there, too, because, again, the phrase, a friendship in flames, I would say it does kind of make sense in this case, because these two used to be pretty tight, but now, considering that we are in a different age of ECW, people have changed over time. Celeste has embraced her identity as the queen, but also seems to 
have a little bit more humility, whereas Cassidy, in this case, she's always been, you know, the sacred seductress, as she always likes to call herself. But in my opinion, she has been consumed by her power, consumed by her greed, and her, <laughs> her standing in the company, if you know what I mean. So, it really begs the question, who's got the edge tonight? And honestly, these two are dead even, in my opinion, unless you've got a completely different take than me, which I am more than down to hear it. I mean, I honestly agree. I think it's pretty even in terms of mental edge, the mental and the mind games, any of that. And I, I apologize for um, stuttering over my words there for a minute. Um, <laughs> now you're all good, I, man. I believe that it is in a way where the mental edge is even between the two, but it comes down to who has changed more. It's kind of like Kobe Jordan and Heraldry. It's both yeah. have changed a lot. Something like... With Cassidy, you you noted it, and I have my opinions, but the more things change, the more mm -hmm. things stay the same. But with Celeste Moda, a lot has changed, and not a lot has stayed the same besides that first and last name. So you mm -hmm. gotta <laughs> you got to wonder, will those changes be able to help Cassidy or Celeste win tonight? Because with Cassidy, I'm sure her mindset is, if it ain't broken, why fix it? And with Celeste Moda, it's, i got to improve if I want to become a two-time champion. Yep, and it's basically a battle of dangerous finishers because we all remember Celeste used to favor submission holds, and while she still does, she's got a new finishing move in the carbon footprint knee strike. Cassidy Blank, of course, still has the blank out. That being said, to go in with my prediction, ugh, man, I'm going to have to go with Celeste just because, again, she's changed so much. She was brought back into the company by Cindy Brooks, and I'll just keep that story uh, short enough. Both of those women, they had a bit of a blood feud. Cindy won, Celeste was fired, and now fast forward several years later, she brought Celeste back as the option C per se against Cassidy Blank and her bloated ego. That being said, of course, because of Cassidy's rage, maybe that might not be enough to help her because, you know, like you said, Celeste has changed, and I think change is a good thing because in this case, it might give Moda the victory. As much as I want to agree with you in terms of... Uh more has changed about Celeste Moda, so we can determine the idea that that Celeste would maybe have the mental edge, would have the physical edge, any of that. Mm -hmm. But with me, I gotta say Cassidy Blank. Again, I, I noted on that, if it ain't broken, why fix it mentality specifically, because that mentality, as much as you may not like it, Max, you gotta, under, like, you gotta understand and gotta agree with me, at least to an extent, that Oh sure. yeah, 100%. it's not it, it, it's not ideal, but it's what's gotten her to becoming almost a three-time winning champion. So I I gotta go mm -hmm. with Cassidy Blank. Hey man, I can't argue with that logic at all. You know, and that's of course that's why we're here. That's why we're friends. Opposing opinions all across the board, and it seems like these fans, in my opinion, they res they respect a different opinion. You know, and that's. That's the way the world works, you know? We don't always have to agree on something, but as long as we can share a couple drinks, put on a good show for these fans, and just have a good time, that's why we're all here. Hell yeah. And uh, someone who has had a bunch of bad luck as of late and has been on a mission to not only find his tag team partner, but save him from a couple of two arrogant pricks in the FCA, Chris Love is going into the night possibly as a one-man army defending the UCW Tag Team Championship against two of the newest faces in the tag team division in the FCA. And that is very true. I mean, the fact that Chris Love holds a championship after my time being gone is quite surprising. The last <laughs> time I saw him, he was, he was, wearing, he was a one-man wearing three different people's faces. But... Yeah, right? <laughs> but you got to wonder, will Elias be here tonight? Sure, yeah, they kidnapped him. But if I'm not mistaken, the FCA said, oh, if you accept, we'll let him go. So yeah. you got to wonder, even though they had him held captive for so long, will Elias be cleared tonight? Can he make his way to Puerto Rico in time to save Chris Love? Or <laughs> who knows, Chris Love, yeah. a lot of people may look at him and think, oh, his brain is always on the opposite side of wherever he's at. If, he's, if it's in Puerto Rico, <laughs> it's in Japan. If he's in Japan, it's, yeah, in, right? it's here. People will believe he doesn't have one. But, but Yeah, I honestly don't think he has one, to tell you the truth, but keep but going. But to be fair, you got to wonder, does he have a plan B? 
You never know. Ooh, I mean, yeah, we've had, you're right. We've, we've had a lot of surprises <laughs> ever since UCW has opened its doors again. So, if you ask me, I think he has a plan B, but I don't think it's the kind of plan B that you're thinking. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't the same thing I'm thinking either. And, you know, Chris Love has been one of the craziest and one of the goofiest bastards I've ever seen behind the desk. And, you know, I'm not gonna dis I'm not gonna discredit the FCA because I've looked into their work. They are a phenomenal tag team. They have done a lot of damage, and of course, this whole thing is part of their FCA World Tour. You know, I'm not gonna discredit them as much as I can, you know, shit on their bloated egos and you know XYZ. It's just a clash of ideologies there. But like you said, does Chris Love have a backup plan? We've seen this guy put on so many faces during his time in ECW. It's just a matter of, you know, which face are we going to see from Chris Love? Does he have a backup plan? Is Elias even going to be here? Is Elias going to be drunk by the time he comes out here? Hell, is everybody going to be drunk by the time they get out here? You never know. The state of the tag team division, though, is uh, it's a bit of a cluster, but is it a good one? I'd say so. So in that instance, in this battle of the insane, who do you got? <laughs> as much as I don't like them, I, I find them quite annoying. And if anything, um, whatever hair that is going to be left on my head by the end of the show, honestly, I may <laughs> I may lose a couple more just because of them. I got to yeah. go with the FCA. I might have to as well. And as much as I, you know, have I have a hug <laughs> English Max. As much as I have, you know, so much respect for Elias, I have to go with the FCA. As much as they drive me nuts as well. Just because, again, they are a team, they function so well as a unit. With Chris Love and Elias, there is a bunch of dysfunction there. And granted, that has been a major part of their success. But at the same time, when you're going up against the unity of the FCA, it's kind of hard to beat. Indeed, you you got to wonder what they have planned, especially with this being their debut, if mm -hmm. um, I'm not mistaken. And I honestly think they have it. I think they have the it factor to be the UCW Tag Team yeah. Champions. They do. They do. And coming up next, following that chaos, is the match, the triple threat for the vacant UCW YouTube Championship. James Frost versus Mike Storm versus Colin Torres. Three dangerous men who all busted their ass to get to this point, but... There is a catch, ladies and gentlemen, if you have been paying attention to our social media. Aiden, take it away, my good sir. Tonight, there will be a YouTube Championship Tournament Last Chance Battle Royal coming up shortly with every man besides Kobe Jordan, who has lost in this tournament thus far. They will be... And Peligro. No, I almost forgot about mm -hmm. them. Peligro and Bill, I almost completely forgot about mm -hmm. them. But anyways, that, besides that... There will be a last chance battle royal with all the other men who have lost in this tournament. And the winner will be added to this championship match tonight. So as far as I'm concerned, Max, you might as well add one more man into this match. We don't know who it is yet, but there is going to be one more man in this match. And you got to wonder, does that knock each man down a peg in terms of the mental advantage or the preparation going into tonight? It definitely does, and ladies and gentlemen, we are about to find out who the fourth man will be coming up next. As my man said, the Last Chance Battle Royal starts now. Contest is an over-the-top road battle royal. The winner of this match will be added to the match that will determine the inaugural UCW YouTube Champ. And we are underway in this six-man battle royal. And joining me behind the desk for the first time in several years is my man Aiden Connors. Aiden, good to have you back behind the desk here. It is good to be back in UCW here in Puerto Rico for UCW Bash at the Beach. Mm. But right now, honestly, I can't put my attention on me being back. It's my attention on the man standing right now going after Siler Jordan, Alexander Henry. He looks like a whole different man. He's been cleaning house right now, my man. And besides, the phrase, there's no law in this land, is perfectly coming into play so far in this match. That is... Jesus, Christopher. That is very true, Max. But you got to wonder with Alex. I'm, I'm sorry for kind of being biased and putting my attention on him. 
But you gotta wonder as he's getting dumped on his head. Speaking of things going on in his head, is this new look dropping the blonde hair, the, the sparkly blue gear that we saw, and the sword and everything that we saw in his in his first round matchup against Colin Torres, where he ultimately lost the account. Is this a mental thing, an aesthetic thing to off put people? Or is, is this honestly just another game of Alex's to make people feel sympathy for him and how the match ended? Makes you wonder there, my man. But right now, he's going to end up thinking about this oh. neckbreaker there from the born thriller. I say all six of these men have been going to absolute town on each other, and the former world champion Romano going to work on the thriller here. Whoa! Playing something there. And besides, as stated before, ladies and gentlemen, all six of these men have lost in the YouTube Championship Tournament. So by proxy, this is their last chance to get in to the now added Fatal 4-Way match later tonight. You do truly gotta wonder who wants it most. Four of these men in this match were eliminated in the first round, if I'm not mistaken, and... Yes, sir. My lord. You got that right. <laughs> Some were eliminated sooner <laughs> than others. Wonder. Makes you wonder there, my man. I was going to say, Cody Hagen eliminated first. Romano eliminated first. Siler George was the last man eliminated in that tournament, having been beaten by James Frost on the last episode of Inferno. And right now, it would appear, Alex is trying to once again get some on Cody Hagen by having him be the first man eliminated in this match. you got to recall the rivalry from back then. Wait, oh my god, oh! big boy bomb! And I think you were going to mention beforehand the friendship between those two. I was actually just about to mention that. Before that, I was going to speak about the rivalry in LWW between Cody Hagen and Alexander Henry. Oh, my oh! God! Speaking of Cody Hagen, he just eliminated the man who survived the longest in the tournament. Painful irony there. The man who's eliminated first eliminates the man who survived last by proxy. Cody Hagen is out on a mission tonight. The biggest man in this match was the, the most easiest eliminated, if some could say. And it, as he was More trying to get Kid Punk out of here, Alex is going after the big man, and Kid Punk and him have the same idea. Get the biggest man out of here, and oh, it fails on oh! him! Two-time U.S. champion now trying to get his bearing straight. Oh, and a set-out jawbreaker there from Punk. You gotta, you gotta wonder how Kid Punk feels going into this match, especially with the man who eliminated him being in this match, Max. The man that he took down just moments ago, Ray Lethal, as he now sets up springboard crossbody. You guys can agree with you there. And in that sense, Kid Punk is staying outside the box by going after everybody, taking all the risks and proving to everybody why he is the most beloved superstar in UCW. But now, look at this. Alexander going to work on Ray Lethal here. I'm trying to chop Romano the probably man. has no idea where he is. Yep. And, oh, I there think Romano oh. found where he is, and that's with his boot to the back of Kid Punk's skull. Jesus Christ. The shadow champion, as many called him, ever since he held the title and then lost it to Jose at Quest for Gold. And, oh, oh, oh. oh. Speaking of the world champion getting eliminated, yet another big loss for the former Shadow World Champion, as you will call him. This is what <laughs> four? Is he is he gonna go around the corner and find a Wendy's and get a four for four? Yeah, probably. One for each <laughs> loss, my man. Another degrading loss. Yep, yep. Probably throw in the occasional uh, misery drink there for you. No, he's gonna get a lot. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no. Oh. oh! Ray Lethal going Some back after kick. he went back after the man that he eliminated. Now Alex going after somebody that he calls a dear friend of the Black Rose Syndicate as he now walks in a Fujiwa armbar trying to just wear down Ray Lethal to where he cannot catch himself on that top rope as Cody Hagen hits a delaying perfect flex. Flash of Styles there. Look at this. Whoa! Hang time there. Trademark Alexander Henry, of course. Kid Punk and now Lethal. Former foes now trying to get their bearing straight. Now Kid Punk. Oh! Back on his feet there with a drop kick. Oh, look at this! Oh! Back. And bear this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. No matter where you go, you end up on the floor. You're eliminated in this match. And say goodbye. No, 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 no! Oh, no! And the human tank in the outlaw, Cody Hagen, just knocked out Kid Punk. And he is absolutely going to town in this match. Wait a minute, what the hell? Oh my, 
Ray Lethal dumping Cody Hagen out of the ring, doing it the proper way, in my opinion, over the top rope. Just throwing him like a sack of potatoes. And Ray, Ray Lethal is absolutely going to town here. And oh, look at this. Oh, no, 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 big boy bomb. Trademark Ray Lethal. And my man, I have this worried suspicion that Alexander Henry might be done. You gotta wonder, there's a huge difference between the styles, the mentalities. For people so close, you think they would have a lot of similarities, but these two men have a lot of differences. Ray Lethal out to just cause destruction and take the YouTube title in the process as he's trying to do here, trying to powerbomb him out of the ring, but Alex, the desperate man to fall in line with the other veterans of UCW to finally win gold. He said he won a medal and it went to nothing. And that's all his career has been in UCW was everything going to nothing as Ray looks to make it nothing for him. And oh my God! Jesus Christopher! Alexander Henry did it! Alexander Henry at the last feasible moment re reversing that power bomb into a Hurricane Rana to get him out of the ring. And now Alexander Henry, the astral assassin, is back in this. He said at one point during a fallout, Will there be a next time? Will there be a next opportunity? And we can now answer it with yes. It's now later in the night with Bash at the beach. It'll be a fatal four-way match to crown the first YouTube champion, James Frost, Colin Torres, Mike Storm, and the veteran, Alexander Henry. Sometimes goodbye is a second chance, and this man definitely earned his. Well, how about that, Aiden? Man, when I say that you cut an absolute hell of a promo building up Alexander Henry, my man, that bloke is going to be the fourth man in what is now the Fatal 4-Way for the YouTube Championship. <laughs> how about that? I mean, I mean, I've known Alexander Henry ever since he was a little kid. I've watched him grow from... Just that little, that little punk kid who would uh, pick his nose while nobody's not looking to the astral assassin, Alexander Henry. I've seen him grow. I've seen him go up and down, up and down, up and down. So besides his own father or brothers, if anybody knows him, it's got to yep. be me. And I, I hope that I summed up correctly just that kind of mindset going into Oh, 100%, it. my man. And... If I want to just give some praise to the other competitors, James Frost, arguably one of the most beloved members of the roster and a beloved member of the business. And honestly, he has so many fans here in Puerto Rico. I mean, I'm looking around. Some of these guys are, you know, wearing, you know, the Canadian flag on their shirts. Gotta give it to the Infinite Hero. And going back to the States now, my man Mike Storm, the Texas kid, got some Texas shirts out here. As long as they're not Dallas Cowboys fans, because the Cowboys fucking suck! I'm a little opinionated there. <laughs> and, of course, kind of... I gotta agree with you. <laughs> Fuck the Cowboys, ladies and gentlemen. But, again, going to the, the third man, Colin Torres, another close friend of Alexander Henry, the prodigal son, the man that he beat to get into the tournament and into and to advance, because I cannot speak English for the life of me here, I'd be better speaking Espanol at this rate. <laughs> when I say that all three of these men deserve to be in this match, they do. And of course, Alex busted his ass. He got the second chance. He beat another one of his friends in Ray Lethal. And of course, he beat, how old was it? Like five or six other men? Ladies and gentlemen, if I forget how to count, it it's ugly. <laughs> Oh man, so much going on, so much to process. That being said though, who do you think has the advantage? And I'm sure I already know what you're going to say because I'll say it first. In my honest opinion, Alexander Henry definitely has the advantage even though he is pulling double duty on this card. As much as I want to say I Ooh. that double duty and knowing that doubt within Alexander Henry, it, if he won't say it himself, I'll say it. Interesting. His own worst enemy is himself. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why he has challenged for championships four times in his seven-year tenure here in UCW and has failed all four times. He would get just to the finish line mm -hmm. and fall yeah. flat. If there's anybody that I believe has the edge tonight, it's actually the man that eliminated him from the tournament. Colin Torres. Interesting. If there's one word to... If there's one word to sum up this entire tournament, even though it's, even though some would say it's historic, I would say that it's controversial. Yeah, 
uh, for lack of a better term. With each match, there was always a way that that something happened and somebody got the easy way <laughs> to the finals. And if that was yeah, especially right. for anybody, it's Colin Torres. Oh, 100%. But if it wasn't the count out, it was the lights going out. And yeah, Colin, he can say, oh, I had nothing to do with that. I was just taking advantage of it. That's what makes me think he has that edge yeah. tonight. The fact that he saw Alex have that moment of hesitation because he didn't want to take the easy road of a count out victory. He took advantage of it. Yeah. He knocked Alex onto the apron, made him fall to the ground, got back in the ring at the count yeah. ten. Kobe Jordan and Heraldry. The lights go out. Heraldry attacks Kobe mm -hmm. Jordan. Colin took advantage. He got the yep. point. I think no matter what the standards are here tonight, no matter what can happen, I think the prodigal son will take advantage. There you go. You could have you could have somebody from UCW from God knows how long ago pop <laughs> up and I I'm willing to bet that Colin would still take advantage of it. I believe that, yeah, and to sort of kind of segue into the other two men, because I want to make sure that I give everybody their shot here and give everybody their due, you know, Mike Storm managed to make it into the finals because Ray Lethal got himself disqualified by choking the man out after the ref count, and then he also attacked an official. James Frost, though, on the other hand, he is one of the only men in this match to win one of his matches in the tournament cleanly by pinning Silo Jordan. So, it's really... You could literally like flip a coin, a four-headed coin if you wanted to go that far, and decide, all right, well, which of these men hold the advantage? In my opinion, though, Granwell, he is pulling double duty on the card. I'm still going to go with Alexander Henry, but if I had to pick another man that wasn't Alex, I'd probably go with James Foss, just because he has a much... He's probably the only guy in here with a clean track record, and... Well, actually, correction. Let me, uh, let me rephrase that. Mike Storm also has a pretty clean track record, because... He did pin Romano via roll-up after Romano fucked around and found out in his match. <laughs> but really, it's it's a toss-up. You all can figure out who you guys want to win. It's it's just going to be a great match. I am definitely pumped up for it. I'm pumped for it, too. And, again, as much as I want to pick uh, pick Alexander Henry, i got to be unbiased. i got to break this down. And i got to go with Colin Torres. I think he's willing to do anything and everything just for a shot. Mm -hmm. Become champion. 100%. And if you want to talk about clawing at the bit to get a shot to become champion, that's where we're at with the main event. And a very, very dark story here, ladies and gentlemen. The fallen hero, the fallen dark prince, Matthew Storm, goes head to head against the boss of the company, the one, Jose Carter, for the Undisputed Championship. And Aiden, you and I have been watching Matthew for a long time. This is a very different Matthew Storm that we are about to see tonight. And honestly, to tell you the truth, it's terrifying. Like, what the hell are we looking at here? I mean, I can hear the fans in the back. They are just absolutely disgusted at the mention of Matthew's name. It's, it's crazy. If there's any way to sum up Matthew Storm, it's this. He is the epitome of the story of you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. At face, one point, 100%. Matthew it, Matthew Storm was the face of this company at one point. He was the hero of this this whole story, this whole company. If anybody mm -hmm. had the fans behind it and his back, it was Matthew Storm. He had to go through everything and anything whenever it came to the Carter regime just for a chance to even become UCW World Champion before it was changed into the Undisputed Championship. Mm -hmm. But now, now he is seeing that Jose Carter... Not only owning UCW, but holding that UCW Undisputed Championship is at the top of the card, and Matthew cannot let history be history. I've seen a lot of change in Jose Carter in yeah. comparison to my last time being here. He's Same matured. here. He is, mm -hmm. he is broken out of that, that chain that was the Carter regime, and he has become mm -hmm. a true man of his word. He has changed, and he's trying to do better, but Matthew Storm doesn't see that. And honestly, a part of me can't blame him, but yeah. that... That will really come into play tonight, that history with the two. With, if it'll help Matthew, if it'll hinder Matthew, if it'll help Jose mm -hmm. or hinder him, Jose, it's honestly hard to call. It's a serious toss-up between these two because Matthew has become so consumed by his despair, consumed by his wrath, because we talk about history pretty much for this entire panel, and there's so much history between Matthew and the Carters. His life, 
pretty much for his entire tenure here in ECW has been a living nightmare. The Carters have, con well, they continued for years on end to punish Matthew, to essentially humiliate him at every turn, and he would keep fighting back every time. But now this time, like you said, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And Matthew has arguably become one of the biggest villains that we have ever seen in ECW. And might as well bring this up, when the man just absolutely pulverized himself, his skull, his opponent, and the owner of the company, he viciously attacked CZB at the end of his match, which was resulted in a no contest. And then in the, at the end of Quest for Gold, he attacked Jose, planting him with D-Face. The element of surprise has been on Matthew's side since Quest for Gold. But I have to bring this up because you might want to talk about double standards here, but in my opinion, turnabout is fair play. Jose mentioned Matthew's family for as often as Matthew has been, you know, essentially taking a piss on the Carter family name. And as far as I know, Matthew is infuriated at the mention of his family, at the mention of his wife, at the mention of his little brother. It's really just a matter of wondering how big is Matthew's rage going to play a factor in the match here tonight? It's honestly quite disturbing to think about. It is quite disturbing to think about, and I, I love that you talked about the element of surprise, which will segue me, at least, into mm -hmm. my prediction for tonight. I honestly think Matthew does have the element of surprise going mm -hmm. into this match tonight. It's, it's like he has unveiled a new face. A lot of people talk about the three faces, uh, that metaphor, if uh, you yeah. remember it. It's, you yes, have the sir. face that your family sees, the face that your friends see, and the face that nobody sees. Yeah. We've now seen the face that nobody was meant to see of Matthew Storm. And now that he's taken off those two masks that I've mentioned before, I think he has that element of surprise. I think he has that change. I think he has that rage. I know mm -hmm. I talked about it earlier, hindering Caligra, which may make me sound like a hypocrite. But no, no, you're good, man. I, I think that rage, I think that change, I think that mentality of going from the hero to the villain will finally let Matthew truly break through that glass ceiling that was always put mm -hmm. above his head, no matter how high he got. Mm -hmm. He'll beat Jose for the championship here tonight. That's, I mean, as much as Matthew disgusts me right now, as much as I can't stand that bastard, I agree with you there. And let's be honest here, since Quest for Gold, Matthew has not competed in a match. Jose has a match under his belt, having defeated David Blake for the Undisputed Championship in a rather strange match where, as I mentioned on that broadcast of Inferno, how the hell can you defend the Undisputed Championship when the title's not even here? And of course, Matthew does have the element of surprise on his sleeve because we have not seen him compete since Quest for Gold. You never know how vicious a man is going to be if you never see him compete in the ring. But I am going to give a little bit of credit to Jose in this case because he might have this on his side. He has the SOB. Because he nearly hit Matthew with it from out of nowhere after their contract signing, and Matthew escaped. Whether or not that plays a hand, because Jose, you never know when he's going to hit it. Look what, look what he did to Romano. Caught him with it after a shooting star press. He always has that chance to hit somebody from out of nowhere, but unfortunately also, so does Matthew. So in my case, even though it's going to be a living nightmare, if he wins the Undisputed Championship, Matthew is my pick tonight. But with that being said, um, seeing that we agree on Matthew Storm, we got to go on to a match that, are we even allowed to talk about it? Uh, <laughs> it it's kind yeah. of an awkward predicament, but... Oh my if god, I, you have if, no idea. <laughs> if I lose my job bringing it up, it's not like I've been gone for six, seven years to begin with. Mm -hmm. I the, mean, yeah. You never the know, unsanctioned man. match between Brian the Brain and DJ Black. Yep, and let me just preface this again, ladies and gentlemen, because I don't know how many times I'm going to end up saying it during the broadcast. I don't know how many times they're going to put like a little overlay over your screens to say that we are not going to be held legally responsible for what these two men do to each other. Because it's going to be the main event, and then this match. This is a completely separate entity from UCW entirely. So we can't get sued for this. We cannot get fined for this. We are not going to be held responsible for whatever carnage and for whatever hell takes place in this match. This match, excuse me language, man, this match is going to be fucked. 
I mean, it, I personally would not use that terminology as the, uh, <laughs> the hope of my paycheck not being dumbed down more than it already has due to me swearing. Um, <laughs> hey, I've already been fine be, enough, man, so it's nothing new to me, but continue. It, it, this match is going to be barbaric. This is... Civil War took place in, what, 2019? Around about, it's like 2018, 2019. Yeah, 20, 2018, 2019. This is multiple years in the making. Brian and DJ were once allies, now turned some big hatred. And though it confuses me why DJ hates Brian, because apparently there was some deal or something of the sort. I don't, I, I don't know. There I was a deal. I can, I can bring that up for you real quick. There was a deal that Brian and DJ made prior to the events of Civil War because... In my honest opinion, and granted, this is talking completely in the past here, but it may as well play a hand. DJ was the insurance policy in the event that Brian was about to lose the Civil War 5-on-5 five five match against Team Storm that night. And DJ was the backup plan, and granted, while David Blake did cost Matthew his spot in the match by planting him with that hammerlock DDT, you know, it's, it's a whole complete cluster of what happened in Civil War, but either way... The reason why DJ is so ticked off at Brian is because, in his head, Brian did not hold up his end of the deal, and he's essentially been holding DJ back since Civil War. So this is literally almost half a decade of animosity between these two, all because of one jacked-up deal. Yes, it is, and um, I gotta, I gotta say, I know this is me quickly segueing to my prediction, but. Um, mm-hmm. With the mind games, with the hatred, with the, the deals not made, etc., etc. I, I come from a place where, if you don't hold up your end of the bargain, you get, you get major consequences. And with this mm-hmm. being unsanctioned, knowing DJ Black, knowing what he's done, knowing his history with, with the family that I have mentioned before, Matthew and Alexander Henry, knowing yeah. how he has beaten stigma, and what he has done to try to beat him again, all of it just oh, yeah. on top of itself. I. I mm-hmm. love Brian. He's family to me. The Carters are family to me, and I hate to go two yeah. for two for predicting against them. But I think DJ has what it takes to beat Brian here tonight. Whether he stays, whether he doesn't, whether this is all in vain or for the the greater good, I think DJ, I think DJ knows what he has to do because Brian didn't hold up his end of the day. Yeah, and I can I can definitely agree with your point there, but. For the sake of competition and for, honestly, the sake of these fans here in Puerto Rico, I'm going to have to go with Brian because, let's be honest here, there was a reason why Brian chose DJ to be the insurance policy. He clearly knows how DJ operates, and DJ's hatred may as well span the entire freaking span of Puerto Rico at this rate. But at the same time, there is a reason why Brian is called the brain. He always has a backup plan, and, you know, that's been well established for as long as I've known Brian, and, well, he, there's a reason why he gave me a job, because he clearly saw some potential in me, even though I've got a bush light problem. <laughs> Bad joke. But, I mean, uh, at the, the end of the day... <laughs> oh, man. But, at the end of the day, this isn't going to be a match. This is literally just going to be a fight, and I know I've said that about plenty of the other matches on this card, but, hell, I mean, you can't even really call it a fight. This is quite literally just going to be a war between two men who absolutely hate each other's guts, probably more than they hate themselves in some instances. And I think Brian might have the edge in this match, but to tell you the truth, calling this match is going to be hard for me because knowing where we stand as a company, knowing what is going to happen, it might single-handedly be one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. But, you know for the sake of fairness, for the sake of competition, and honestly, for the sanity of these fans and for the sanity of the company as a whole, I have to go with Brian because maybe, just maybe, this will be the final nail in the coffin for Brian to prove to everybody that he has redeemed himself. And this will be another notch on the badge to show everyone that he is the brain, that he has changed, and that he is willing to take another step forward and bury a shard of his checkered past. I guess we'll have to see whenever the the time comes for the unsanctioned match. I I honestly feel bad for you because I know you're the guy that's gonna have to call it, but <laughs> I, I trust you to 
take this pay-per-view in your hands and call it just as it's supposed to be. And it's yes, honestly been an honor to share this pre-show panel with you, man. Thank you, my man. And uh, if you're sticking around before that unsanctioned match, please give me your recipe for the cherry vodka because I'm probably going to end up eating it because I'm not drinking Fireball, I'm not drinking tequila, and I'm probably going to end up running out, of the, running out of these by the time the main event comes around. So you're going to need to give me your recipe. <laughs> I will do what I can. I will try to get it to you. Technology has always been a confusing thing to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is my man Aiden Connors. Aiden, you got any final words for these fans here in Puerto Rico before the show gets started? All I have to say is that I hope everybody enjoys tonight. It's going to be a night of many surprises, many twists and turns, and this will... People said that stepping out of Quest for Gold was a step into a new era for UCW, but if anything, I believe tonight is truly the night that we step yes, into sir. a new era for Ultimate Championship Wrestling. We're stepping into a new era. This is a new age for UCW because, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for me to sign off. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here in Puerto Rico, and coming up is Bash at the Beach. My name is Max Thorne. This is my man Aiden Connors. And as I said on Inferno, I'll see you at the beach. With the more likely of the options, I'll see you all in hell. <laughs>